All right, man, peace. So a certain young player has been brought to my attention that I really was not aware of, that being Mr. Donovan Mitchell of the Utah Jazz. I really did not even know who he was until he got into that little dust-up with Joel Embiid. And now it's been brought to my attention that he's on the verge of really starting to tear up the league. So I, I figured that he deserved a little coverage because I believe that his profile is only going to grow as the season goes along. Once again, his name is Mr. Donovan Mitchell of the Utah Jazz. Ironically enough, they had a little segment on him this week on Inside Stuff. So let's see what they have to say. So after starring at Louisville, Donovan Mitchell was chosen by the Nuggets in this year's draft. But the Jazz acquired him in a draft night trade, and I think they're pretty glad that they did. The talented guard has made an immediate impact on both ends of the floor and has emerged as one of the league's breakout rookies. And for Donovan, the road to the NBA began in the New York area. He's a native of Connecticut who grew up in Westchester County. So when the Jazz visited the Knicks and the Nets, it was a chance to come home and also fulfill a dream of playing at Madison Square Garden. Oh, Westchester County, that's just north of the Bronx. He got to lose that pink bag, though. Mitchell may come away as being the biggest steal of this past draft. I don't know if it's a great Greenwich, Connecticut, man, but do you really truly consider yourself? I grew up, I've spent 16 years in New York, growing up in New York, and the last five I've been in Greenwich, Connecticut. So I claim both. I went to school in Greenwich, Connecticut, but I lived in New York. This game probably feels like a, like a home game, to be honest. I have a lot of friends and family out here. To finally be here, it's a dream come true. You know, I grew up watching so many games here, coming to games here. This is my first time ever playing. That's why this whole thing, just being sitting here, feels weird. I've never been this low before. I've always been like, I got to know up in the crowd. So this is, this is, this is me. I don't know if you were that high up in the um, in the stands. From what I understand. Your dad is an executive uh, in Major League Baseball. Beyond that, for those of you who don't know, Greenwich, Connecticut is an area where a lot of upper crust Caucasian people live. All right. So I'm sure that he got very good schooling. And that's a great thing. Okay, I'm not one of these guys who like to come on and talk about so-called black people who were fortunate enough to be put through affluent or higher level uh, education. If you were able to do that, then that's great. It's cold, too. He's starting to figure things out. You're, you're seeing the growth with Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, that man got hops. And he, and he has a great jump shot. His friends, his family, everybody were happy for him. He seemed calm and relaxed there, which I was a little worried. I thought he was going to be nervous, but he played well. Was that hard beating the Jazz? <laughs> I, I was scared though, man. I was nervous the entire game. Didn't I tell you? <laughs> Greenwich, Connecticut. That's where you have a lot of hoity toity Caucasians at. You know what that reminds me of? If you guys ever see the movie O with Mackay Pfeiffer and Julia Stiles, it basically was a modernized um, rendition of Shakespeare's classic play Othello. And in Othello, of course, uh, the character of Othello was a Moor who happened to be a great military leader. He had a no, he had certain thoughts put into his head by his quote unquote good friend. Uh, to make him think that his wife was sleeping around on him. Of course, Othello was a general over a majority Caucasian military. That's you know that's I'm not going to digress too much into that into that time period, but that should that should tell you all that you need to know in regards to that time period. But if you see the movie O, oh, it basically modernizes Shakespeare's play by having uh, Othello, the character of Othello, played by Mackay Pfeiffer, be the the most prominent member of a high school basketball team 
that is almost entirely Caucasian other than him because he goes to an affluent high school because he's able to play basketball so well. And of course, his lady, played by Julia Stiles, is a, a, a young Caucasian girl. So anyway, you know, the movie proceeds just like the play. But I just say that to say that this person, Donovan Mitchell, and, <laughs> and, and the people, the retinue of people who came to support him, it just made me think of that movie. You know, this is kind of the sentiment that Kevin Durant was touching on in regards to how you are treated differently when you're an affluent athlete. You know, when you can entertain them. So it's, it, it will behoove Donovan Mitchell, but I'm sure that he already has his head on straight because I see that his father is in his life. You know, just to maintain certain a certain uh, perspective. That's why it's so important for the so-called black man to instruct his son um, in a in a in a in a very very consistent way. You have to stay in your in your son's ear in regards to him keeping his head on straight because he can lose perspective with a lot of this false adulation. Right? It can give him a it can give him a very delusional understanding of life. Donovan has athleticism in his blood. His dad played minor league baseball, and he's now an executive with the New York Mets. Don That's what it was, yeah, with the New York Mets. Uh, Donovan Mitchell's dad is now with the New York Mets. And hopefully he can help the Mets out. I grew up a Mets fan, so hopefully he can do something with them. I don't really follow baseball like that anymore. But at one time, I was a big Mets fan as a kid. So it's good to see that they have a brother in an affluent position. Hopefully he can do something with them. Donovan was actually a standout pitcher himself before focusing on hoops. And since Donovan was close to his old neighborhood, it's only fitting that our song this week is called The Sky is a Neighborhood. It comes from the Foo Fighters. And yes, it's Kalo's favorite. So hey, look, the Foo Fighters can kiss my ass, okay? All right, so now they also had a nice little segment on Donovan Mitchell on this show, The Jump with Rachel Nichols and Amina L. Hassan and Hall of Famer Tracy McGrady. Let's see what they have to say. I want to talk about Donovan Mitchell, the rookie guard, 24 yeah. points, 6 assists, and last night went over the Clippers. That boy got some hops. This Plus, I mean, ball. he had... Whew. And notice Amino Hassan said Westchester. Uh, if you heard his voice in the background, Amino Hassan's from Queens, so he knows that area as well. Some highlight plays. Impressed the heck out of Austin Rivers, Ooh. who said the following afterward, quote... Donovan Mitchell is the best rookie in the NBA, bottom line. Mm. He's got way more on his shoulders than a lot of the other guys, mm -hmm. excluding Ben Simmons. I don't know if you can say this is the best rookie except the guy who's the consensus rookie of the well. year candidate, but, uh, okay, go on. Well, look, Ben Simmons is not a real rookie. I mean, we know he's a rookie officially because he, he didn't get to play last year. But, look, to me, once, you, once you're out your whole actual rookie season, even if it's because of injury, you really should not be privy to being able to receive the Rookie of the Year award. Um, we, we do know that Ben Simmons is playing the best of any so-called first-time or, or NBA player who's playing on the floor for the first time. So, I mean, look, they did the same thing with Blake Griffin a few years ago. I remember that. Because we always talk about Ben Simmons isn't really a rookie. Rookie plus. Yeah, rookie plus. Rookie plus. Rookie plus. Tracy, what do you think, Donovan? Well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest. I didn't know who this kid was. Mm -hmm. I didn't know he was either until about a couple weeks ago when he got into that thing with Embiid. And now all of a sudden the man scored 41 points last night. Mm -hmm. Seriously, I, I was working out with, I work out with some guys at mm -hmm. my house, young guys. They come up to my house and work out. It was like this kid down in the mix, balling. Like, who the hell is that? Right. It was like, he plays for Utah. So Utah, who? Right. <laughs> Jazz, right? So I, I searched him out. I, I went and watched Utah play. Right. And I was like, damn, he doesn't play like a rookie to me. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. This guy, Highly confident. This guy, I'm, I'm close to some guys who are close to him. Up until like two weeks before the draft, he thought he wasn't going to get drafted. That's He's amazing. so incredibly humble 
and he, he reminds me a lot about you. Like how women tell you, you're going to be a Hall of Famer, you're like, come on. Yeah. Right. Same thing, this kid. Well, Tracy should have been like that. Because look, let's be for real, and I stated this when he got selected for the Hall of Fame. Uh, T-Mac at peak level is certainly a Hall of Famer, but I wasn't sure if he'd done it long enough. And I definitely did not think that he deserved to go to the Hall of Fame before Chris Webber. So clearly there are some political issues with Chris Webber, maybe dating back to his time at Michigan and him dealing with the boosters and also him kind of snitching on one of his benefactors from back before he went to Michigan University. I think that the NBA is kind of, you know, they're kind of using that against Chris Webber because to me he certainly deserved to go to the Hall of Fame above Tracy McGrady, and I, and I have love for T-Mac. T-Mac was a dynamic scorer in the early 2000s before he hurt his knee. But I did not think that he deserved to go into the NBA Hall of Fame, certainly not on the first ballot. I believe he was first ballot Hall of Famer. Like, I just, I'm sorry, but no. And definitely not before Chris Webber. Chris Webber went to Golden State, made the playoffs, went to, went to Washington, the Bullets, and made the playoffs, went to, Sacram went to Sacramento and turned around a franchise that hadn't had any success in decades and got them to the playoffs, not only to the playoffs, but really should have went to the finals if it wasn't for the refs rigging that series against the Lakers in 2002. Uh, Chris Webber, to me, should be in the Hall of Fame above Tracy McGrady. You're going to be a first-round pick. Or before Tracy McGrady, I should say. First-round pick, he's like, really? No. And so I think it's a combination of he's an incredibly hard worker, but also... He doesn't have the entitlement right. of, of some of the bigger name right. guys might right. have, right? And I think he's been remarkable. Is he the best rookie? I think Kyle Kuzma has a, like, a real rookie. Kuzma's played very, very well. Kuzma's been a surprise. And I, I saw Kuzma play against the Philadelphia. Uh, he has a great face-up game. He has a very good post game. And he's good from long range. He, he's very surprising in regards to the array of offensive moves that he has. Yeah. I think Kyle Kuzma has some thoughts about that. I think there are a couple other names. Dennis Jason Smith, he's in the conversation. Jason Jason we Tatum. cannot yeah, definitely look, look him. Yeah, definitely. absolutely. And you know what? Fans in Utah always complain that they don't get enough national attention. You are not the only one who is not watching them all the time. We can have a larger yeah. discussion about market size. But there is your shine, Utah Jazz. There's your shine, Donovan Mitchell. You have our eye. Dunk no contest. I want to see him in a dunk contest. Well, we'll see. Maybe he will be in a dunk contest. But that's it on Donovan Mitchell. Hopefully the brother continues to not just have a great rookie season, but a great career. Peace.